Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 3, which was written by the legendary John Favreau and directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. Now, she's an actress who was in things like Jurassic World and Black Mule, but she's also Ron Howard's daughter, and she proves once again that she directs better Star Wars content than her father. And Ron Howard, we all know, directed the abomination known as Solo. So I think the reason that C directs better the Star Wars is because the Mandalorian directors are given more creative liberties than the film directors. Because they're always getting fucked in the ass by Kathleen Kennedy. But I don't think that's as much as the case here because it's mostly head by John Favreau who gives the directors more creative liberties to do stuff. So anyway, this was the best episode of season two yet, I think. Though I enjoyed episode two a lot. Episode 3 was where the plot really picked up for me. So it starts with uh, Mando's ship crash landing into the ocean, but it gets picked up by this giant crane. Um, and the fist creature who lives on this planet is uh, the same species of the It's a Trap guy from the original series. You know, the guy who yells, It's a Trap! Um, so anyway, the frog lady from last episode meets up with her frog husband, and they live happily ever after. So that's nice. And Mando meets this Cthulhu squid who brings Mando to this fishing ship. But it turns out to be a trap because Baby Yoda is used as bait for their fishing. But though, and so the Mandalorian tries to save him, but like they both almost get eaten by this sea monster. But they're both rescued by Mandalorians in the nick of time. But these aren't any old Mandalorians. They're led by Katie Sackhoff as Bo-Katan, and she makes a triumphant return. So, I was a huge fan of Katie Sackhoff even before the Clone Wars, because she was in Battlestar Galactica, which is probably one of my favorite sci-fi series of all time. And she played my favorite character on that, who was named Starbuck. But it's nice that they got the same woman who voiced her in the Clone Wars to play her on live action. Uh, because Katie Sackhoff physically looks the part of bo as well. She's in, like, great shape, and she's... Well, she's known for playing action heroes, I guess, so... Perfect casting. Um, so anyway, we find out that the Mandalorians from Mandalore don't keep their helmet on at all times, but the Mandalorians from Mando's troop do. So they're different types of Mandalorians. So Mando leaves them temporarily because they aren't his Mandalorians, but... After he does that, he almost immediately gets mugged by some aliens, but Starbucks, Katie Sackhoff's Mandalorian save him. So Bo-Katan wants to get to know Mando, but also she offers to buy him a drink. But, like, I have a question about that, because Mando can't take off his helmet, so how is he going to drink, you know? Like, what was, why? I have some questions, John. I need some answers. So anyway, Bo-Katan agrees to tell him where the Jedi are, only if he helps them take over an Imperial ship. Now, I've noticed that Mando gets sent on, like, three side quests this season. It's just almost as if he's in a video game. Like, first we get the Cobb Vance, then we get Frog Lady, now we get Bo-Katan. And they're always like, I'll give you information if you help me with this unrelated problem. Now, I I'd say it's getting repetitive, but this show is so fun to watch. Anyway, so I don't even care at this point. Give me as many side quests as you want. It's fun to watch. So while they're raiding this Imperial ship, Gus Fring from Breaking Bad gives the pilots orders to crash the ship and kill themselves. So the commando kills the other two pilots and tries to crash the ship himself. But Mando and the team save the ship and narrowly miss crashing into the city. They were like inches away of crashing into the city. Isn't that... Isn't that convenient? Isn't that a little too convenient, guys? Like, so much stuff in Star Wars is, con like, overly convenient. And, like, what are the odds of it? So, like every other plot convenience, I'm gonna blame this one on the Force. It's the Force's fault. You could thank the Force. So anyway, because Mando helped Bo-Katan, she tells Mando where to find Azoka Tano, and he leaves and the episode ends. So, guys, you know, I really like this episode a lot. It was only 35 minutes long, but it felt much longer considering all the shit that happened in it. Like I said, I was very happy to see Katie Sackhoff back as Bo-Katan. She's just as likable in this as she was in Battlestar. 
And considering the show ended like 11 years ago, it's it's crazy how good she looks. Like, she looks the same almost. Um, I was also happy to see Giancarlo Esposito back, aka Gus Fring from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. And now I know that Bo Katan is trying to get her dog sable back from him because he stole it somehow. That was like Darth Maul's lightsaber, but then Ahsoka stole it. So I guess she gave it to Bo Katan or something. I don't know. Point is, Giancarlo Esposito has the lightsaber and she wants it back. So I think we might see Katie Sackoff back sometime, maybe next season. I don't know. So I like the special effects a lot of the ship crashing and the fishing city. It looked very realistic. And yeah, I'm just really impressed by the uh, special effects and the budget that goes into the series. But I probably shouldn't be because it's Disney. Like, they pull their money into everything. So yeah, this was a great episode of the season. Great episode of the series. I'm going to give it an A-. minus. Um, let me know down in the comments what you thought of this episode. And I'll be back next week to talk about episode 4. I hope everybody out there has a nice day and stay safe and peace.